get us started, this first question came from Wanya. Hey, what's up, Engraven? Hope everything is good with you and the fam after the hurricane. I wanted to get your opinion on this team so far. I know it's still early, but I wanted to know your evaluation so far. Um, this Ravens team, they um, so far, they've been all right. Uh, haven't been good, haven't been bad. They've been all right. Have some good moments, had some bad moments, uh, and everything in between, of course. Uh, but they've been all right. Uh, the potential is there. Uh, health will help out a lot. But even before health, um, just uh, decision making, uh, execution, um, just everybody coming together and just everybody putting their best foot forward. And I know that sounds so cliche and it sounds like just like kind of coach talk or whatever. Oh, we got to put our best foot forward. Da, da, da. But them actually doing it. Um, starting from the top. To the bottom, everybody being accountable uh, for their actions. Uh, Harbaugh, as the head coach, being accountable uh, for his actions, both good and bad. Um, then Lamar Jackson being accountable for his actions, both good and bad. Uh, and then everybody else, so on and so forth, offensive line, running backs, receivers, to everybody. Um, but everybody got to bring it that much more. Uh, this game against the Bengals, it is like... It's 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 like a must win game, really. And it is still early in the season, but you just especially how the last game win and especially how the Ravens been losing, you just don't want that to be the Baltimore Ravens. You don't want that to be the team that they halfway are and halfway aren't. Um so my evaluation on this team is that they're close. They they're very close. They're so close to just getting over that hump. If they can get over those humps, consistently uh because it seems like with the ravens they can be like i know lamar said it the other day at the presser something that we've been saying for a while too i know a lot of y'all been saying the same thing a lot of times they can be their own worst enemy they can be their own worst enemy and that's not to discredit anything that these other teams are doing because they obviously play their part too and they take advantage of any weaknesses that the ravens display but a lot of times the ravens can shoot themselves in the foot with decisions, with turnovers, with the interceptions. Uh, I don't think they've had any fumbles that they lost this year so far, but interceptions with, with drops, with offensive line play, with, with as far as the offense did not scoring in, in the second halves of games. Like, that's, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. With the defense, the not, not them not closing on the big plays and making enough big plays where they have opportunities to. Um, the pass rush has just been disgusting. It's been disgustingly bad. Um, with coaching, again, the, we know the taking the whole points thing. We, and it's just, it's a lot of different things. And then there's, there's some other fourth down decisions that are made and whatnot. There's some challenges. There's the timeouts. And sometimes not calling timeouts can bite them in the butt. It's just, it's, it's so many. And it's all, it's, it's like with the Ravens, the most frustrating part about it is that it's so many little things it's these little things that if they could have just done this a little better in the game if they could have just fixed that a little better in the game we we talking about an undefeated team right now and that stat that i know all of y'all have seen some people have even brought it up a couple of times the whole all the ravens have been trailing for 14 seconds in four games and they're two and two. They've only been trailing for 14 seconds. The fact that they've only been trailing for that little amount of time and they're two and two, it, show, it shows you how close they are. So if Ravens can just fix the little stuff, that's all you fix the little stuff, they could go such a long way. But we've been talking about these little problems with the Ravens for years now. So that's why a lot of people are extra concerned right now. Uh, but continuing, he said, for me personally, I'm not going to say it's time to panic because we're f about we're four about to be five games in, but things need to be changed. Like, I don't understand why we continue to go through this. Like, what is really the problem with this team? Why does the offense and defense continue to play tag and musical chairs to see who's going to struggle <laughs> and who's going to blow the game? <laughs> bad play calling, uh, bad game management, bad play on the field, bad adjustments, bad just bad everything. I wouldn't be surprised or shocked if John loses the locker room, and I won't be surprised if he's allowed to coach next year and won't see the Super Bowl ever again and will just be stuck with two Lombardi trophies. Oof. Um, 
he ooh, he he if he loses the locker room, that's it. Like if you lose a locker room, there's there's no coming back from that. I don't think right now he's on the verge of losing the locker room, anything like that. Um, but really, depending on how these next couple of games go, especially it starts with this game. It starts with this game because you don't want to be on the verge of losing the locker room, and you don't want to be in this pattern that could lead you to losing the locker room eventually if those patterns continue. You don't even want to get into that. So, I, And I don't think he's close to that right now. Uh, but, again, it, it, cannot, it cannot get there for him. Or else, that'll be a wrap. Um, he said, I'm going to end on this. If I'm Bashadi, I will call a team meeting involving everybody saying, if y'all continue to coach and play like this, expect pink slips in some of y'all's lockers and offices. I honestly think, like, straight up, if Bashadi called a meeting like that, uh, Harbaugh, will, Harbaugh will probably be in the back of the meeting laughing like, <laughs> I know he ain't going to fire me. Because Harbaugh is straight, like he said. Harbaugh, like, he got, like, so much leeway, man. So I don't think he, I don't even think Harbaugh would take that seriously, man. Straight up. Uh, but anyway, he said it at the end of the year. Anyway, sorry for the long email. Just want to know your thoughts and hashtag team keep it clean. Ooh, that's a... Uh, that's a powerful way uh, to get us started off. But, yeah, again, hopefully Ravens could improve. The, and, again, it's not it, it's, it's not that they got to go through these big, dramatic, huge changes. But they just got to fix the small stuff. And if they can fix the small stuff, they can have a big opportunity to do something special. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs. If you want to figure out how to be a part of it, well, check the description. It got all the little goodies in there. So anyway, next question came from my guy, Oreo Cookie. He said, I'm disappointed. Hi, Engraven. I'm absolutely fuming, by the way. This is just after the Bills game. I don't know why I'm fuming. I kind of expected this. Anyways, on to the question. Who do you think is to blame on defense? Is it the defensive coordinator who shall not be named? Or is it rookies on the defense? Um, It's really, uh, for the Bills game? Who's to blame? I mean, the defense. Overall, they did pretty good. They they did pretty good to hold Josh Allen. Because I thought, like, this game was going to be maybe 38 to 35, something like that. Um, I, I thought it was going to be a high-scoring game. But for them to hold Josh Allen and them down the way that they did, um, yeah. And, and I know they, they did give up a 17-point lead. I mean, what's new? But uh, offense wasn't helping out either. So... With the defense, this, like the game, I really wouldn't put this one really on the defense like that. This is, about, this is on the offense. This is on the offense. They, they fell asleep again. They fell asleep at the wheel. Um, but anyway, he said, uh, uh, also, who is to blame for the second half struggles of the offense? Is it Lamar Harbaugh, the offensive coordinator who shall not be named? It's all the above. It's all the above. All of them. Um, because, again, they, they just... That offense has been stale in the second half. They've been stale. So, Lamar, he turned the ball over twice. Uh, the hard ball and that decision time didn't take the points. Um, and, and, I mean, well, one of them turnovers wouldn't have been one of them turnovers that they would have taken the points. But it happened. He turned the ball over twice. Offensive line and not blocking receivers. They dropping. It's, it's just... Uh, it is ugly, and the Ravens got to get out of that funk. They get they got to get out of that second half funk, man. Um, and he said, anyway, sorry for a super long question. I'm just mad right now. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, what's up, fam? I got to ask a few questions. Uh, I know this is not a popular conversation, but football is about doing the little things. Coaching has been the main problem so far. With good coaching comes great communication. It seems to be the biggest yikes for this team. There has to be a change soon, whether that's moving on from Harbs or from ownership. Uh, this team has the talent but lacks the leadership that is needed to be fully successful. Not trying to point fingers, but nothing is different, even from a few years ago. Sorry for the long message, but something has to be done. Thanks, fam, and hashtag team keep it clean. Mm. That is um something right there because the, the part that stuck out to me the most about what he said is that nothing is different even from a few years ago. And 
and that's that's a big part of it right there. While the uh, the passing game is looking better, the running game is suffering. Uh, I don't even think he's talking about any of that. I think I mean he did say that he is talking about uh, coaching. So um, it's just been a lot of the same type of decision making and the questionable uh, decision making that um, ha- has had a lot of people, fans, uh, a lot of everybody just scratching their heads. Um, now, players are not exempt at all from criticism, from uh, sh- them taking their part of the blame as well. So it's, it's definitely had been on the players too. Um, but he's speaking about in his question about leadership, and he actually brought up leadership. He said there has to be a change soon, whether that's moving on from Hobbs or from ownership. Uh, this team has the talent. So when you talk about talent, that's obviously about players. But then he said, but they lack the leadership that's needed to be fully successful. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty powerful right there. That, this is a big year. Um, this this is a big year. I think this year is certainly the, the no excuse season, uh, even though I feel like some people will still get uh, excuses. But I feel like this should be the no excuse season. Um, the Ravens are, while they still do have their fair share of injuries, they certainly do. Um especially compared to last year, but they are kind of relatively healthy um, for the most part. Uh, but health has not been the reason for their struggles this year, in my opinion. It hasn't been. Well, except the Dolphins game with Marlon Humphrey, he went out because he wasn't healthy. And then, yeah, Dolphins, they took full advantage of that. Um, but, I mean, even that, even even when he went out, like, that's still, no. No. Like giving up what four touchdowns, three or four touchdowns in a, in, in a quarter alone, all because Marlon Humphrey off. The f- nah, that's it's a lot deeper than than Marlon Humphrey just being off the field for that. Um, but yeah, Ravens just gotta get stuff fixed, man. Uh, they gotta get stuff fixed like ASAP. Next question came from my guy MJG. Uh, quick reflection. He said, "What's up, in Graven? Hope you and the family are doing well." This may have some length to it. Growing up as a kid, you have a dog who's been a family dog for years that everyone loves. The years go by, and you notice that the dog shows age and begins to slow down. The dog isn't moving like it used to, and isn't responding well to situations. And this time, uh, going to the vet isn't helping. Oh, I kind of, kind of see where this is going. Uh, you have a choice: do you let the dog continue, or do you put it down? Oof, oof. Ooh, ooh, oof! The analogy—that's a powerful analogy right there. That's a very powerful analogy. But anyway, he said that is how I feel about John Harbaugh right now. I haven't paid any attention to the things you and Ravens fans have been saying about being a repeat offender. Uh, it says a lot to me when legends like Ray and Ed aren't fond of him, and the way Marcus went off is a huge flag to me. And I hope it doesn't spill into a trade request. I agree. Uh, we need that dude. Uh, I, he's talking about Marcus Peters. I honestly thought we would surprise people Sunday with a win and defense came through. I do feel for Patrick Queen. I do like him. But if you're around the play, you got to execute. Like you said, the mental is there. Listening to uh, Trust the trust the Bank. Oh, shout out to them, by the way. Uh, he said, McConnor and Josh got me thinking about Harbaugh and so on. I feel we will be fine, but some changes need to be made. What specific changes are you making and why? Sorry for the rant. Probably send another question. Uh, you and the fam stay blessed and safe. Sending peace and love. Appreciate that, man. Wow. Do you let the dog continue on or do you put it down? Um. Mm, mm, mm. Well, at this point of the season, uh, you, you you let them continue because in this, so I, I said earlier, this is a no excuse season uh, for everybody. Um, but you uh, you let them continue and you see how this thing plays out. Um. You, this is a, it's a big season. Obviously, um, a lot is on the line in in so many different ways. So many different ways. Um, Because, one, uh, there's a lot of pressure. Or there should be, if it was me, there would be a lot of pressure uh, on everybody. Um, Because I'm looking at the head coach like, all right, this, last year you had a bunch of injuries. This year you got some injuries too now. But, got to get this thing right. Got to get this thing right. We 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 were taught a lot of football lessons last year um, that we should have definitely learned from. Um, and I'm 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 I mean, there's pressure on Lamar too, uh, but it's not pressure for him to get a contract. Uh, he's already he's already earned a contract. 
Uh, he still needs to play good, though. Like, just because he's already earned the contract, that, that doesn't take away. Like, hey, no, you still need to play good. Um, but I feel like with the Lamar situation, I feel like that puts even more pressure on Harbaugh, even more pressure on Eric DaCosta because everything that's going on could influence Lamar Jackson's decision. And, of course, he said he wants to stay with the Ravens, and they've said that they want to keep him. They've given him an offer uh, or, or offers, and he just turned them down because they ain't meet where he wanted it, where, where he wanted it to be met at. Um, but, you know, in business, things can change. Things can change. And if business ain't right, people can want to work for a company forever. But if that company don't show them what they want to see, then they could be like, you know what, I'm gone. I'm gone. I don't want to be with this company anymore. We, of course, hope that that doesn't happen, but business is business. So anything's possible. Um, so, but with the Lamar situation, that puts more pressure on John Harbaugh and EDC, in my opinion. It should put more pressure on them from Bishotti. Because it should be like, hey, if, if y'all can't get this thing right and Lamar wants to leave, uh, nah, then hey, that ain't going to fly. That is 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 not gonna fly. Um, so yeah, man, I just uh, mm, you said so much with this, um, but I would I I wouldn't move on from anybody right now at this point. Like if it would if you would ask me this during the season, I mean during the off season, oh, it would have been a much different answer. Uh, with several different uh positions and and players and uh, coaches and stuff like that, it would have been much different. But we're here now, so. Since we're here now, going into week five, you got to ride it out. Ride it out and hope for the best. Um, but definitely give them little warnings. Give them little hints like, hey, you, you see them walking by in the hallway? Hey, <laughs> we taking the points this week? You got to do some, hey, <laughs> be, be a little subtle with it, but let them know like, hey, it's, it's time and that pressure's on. Next question came from my guy, Anthony. Uh, he said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well. Uh, not that the Bills game has come and gone. I was just wondering, when do you think we will address some issues? For example, inside linebacker. Uh, maybe it's just me, but I feel like a lot is being asked of Queen, especially with Josh Bynes. I feel like a better middle linebacker would help Patrick Queen. There are plenty of vet corners out there on the market. And when will we see more of Travis Jones? Uh, I am sure uh, many others were very high on him, but we haven't seen him much. Man, and he sent this uh, on October 4th, so that was way before uh, AJ Klein got signed. So, boom, you, you, got, exa you got exactly uh, what you asked for. Um, and as far as uh, vet veteran corners out there, uh, Ravens, they did bring back Daryl Worley. So, that was that. Uh, as far as Travis Jones, I think it'll be one of those slowly but surely things uh, that he's out there more and more. He is a rookie. Uh, there are some, um, there's been a lot of high praise with him. Um, and it's, it's just a matter of just him putting it together. Ravens giving him opportunity. And with the defensive line, it's going to be hard for him to get opportunities like that because you got a Calais Campbell, you got a Matt Abike. Um, and they love Travis Jones. He's one of them players that you know they love, like love, love, love. Um, so he's going to get out there, but it's just going to be one of those things that where it just keeps ramping up over time. Stop with the cute plays and cute culture. Next question came from my guy, Manuel. He said, what's up, Engraven? Let's get straight to it. And like I said in my previous question, the cute plays have to stop. Uh, they cost us the lead again, and cute coaching and uh, an analytics has to go. Harv should know by now after 15 years in the league that no matter who your opponent is, you always keep scoring and stop them with your defense, and that requires no analytics at all. Simple as that. Uh, they stop you on offense, you adjust, and keep scoring until the game is over. Or in the case that MP Juice Man wanted to do, Hobbs until the until the bell rang. Another thing, both Lamar and Allen played a bad game, but Allen has a better cast around him that allowed the Bills to come back and get the dub. Who does Lamar have when he needs help? Bateman, who dropped three crucial catches. Shout out to Hollywood for that. A very green uh, offensive line that can't keep the defense at bay when needed. Mm. A very green defense that can't hold the lead despite the talent, excluding MP Juice Man and Humphrey. A coaching staff that, when winning, sits on the couch, lights a cigar, and drinks scotch, thinking they won because they're leading in the first half when the game is four quarters and they don't adjust. An organization not willing to give him a primetime wide receiver or a fully guaranteed contract, despite saving it from being a 32nd ranked team in the NFL. Uh, if Lamar leaves Baltimore because of this, I won't be mad at him ever. Mm. Said a lot with this. Um, but yeah, just another reminder that... Stuff needs to step up. Stuff needs to pick up. 
Um, and this is not even because uh, I know a lot of people like to say, "Oh man, Ravens! Yeah, anytime Ravens lose, a lot of Ravens fans they act like the the world is falling apart." And da 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 da. And it's not even that. It's just that uh, people are seeing stuff. People, but people see stuff that had that they've been seeing for a while. Not even just this year. They've been seeing it for a while, and people just don't want to go down the same road all over again and just feel like a, a team that is talented. They are lacking in a few areas here and there, but a team that overall is talented, we just don't want to see it wasted. Next question came from my guy Matthew. He said, hey, Graven, hope you're doing well. My question is, at what point do we need to question EDC and his status tr truly as a great GM? Uh, well, it depends on if you call him a great GM or not. I, think, I don't think EDC deserves a title of great yet. I think he's been, I think he's been solid. He been, he's been pretty good. I can't say great yet, though. Not great yet. Um, but anyway, he said Lamar was drafted by Ozzy. EDC so far has swung and missed on a lot of draft picks. That's true. Uh, he decided to not bring any offensive weapons, and yet Hobbs and Giro want the offense to close out games instead of defense and kickers, and don't trust the defense to stop J J Josh Allen. Oh, interesting. Uh, he swung and missed on a lot of trades, signing and signings included DeAndre Hopkins, Xavier Howard, uh, Debo Samuel. Uh, I didn't hear anything about them being interested in Debo. But anyway, uh, Juju, yeah, that was true. Zedary Smith, yeah. Even Michael Brock has backed out, yeah. Kind of tired of the almost had him. There was uh, Jamal Adams, too. I remember that one. I um, think they were interested in Jarvis Landry. They were interested in uh, Julio, but didn't want to uh, trade for him. Um, that, yeah, and there were more, but, uh, uh, yeah, I don't want to go down that, that list again. Um, this team has no pass rush. Away looks bad this year. Queen looks like a bust. Uh, the defense, despite way more money going into that side of the ball, is bottom five in the league. The new defensive coordinator is failing, and he is staffed under EDC. Lamar has no contract and seems to be in no rush to sign up for more years. When is EDC going to stop being given the benefit of the doubt and start really being questioned as a competent GM? I, I think people are, are doing that already. I think people are certainly doing that already. I've seen so many Ravens fans, um, because I, and I think because so much stuff, you're really getting to see and getting to know uh, EDC um, over the years. Yeah, he hasn't been bad, but there's stuff that got to improve big time. Um, I know uh, when he first uh, was hired, or not hired, but really announced as a new GM, uh, that honeymoon stage, uh, what was it, 2019? I think it was a 2019 season. Um, but that that stage, um, it was great because, again, Ravens went 14-2. and two, Everything was pretty and da 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 then they got stomped out in the playoffs. And then, um, and I said, I, I remember saying it when we made the video for Eric DaCosta when he first got introduced as GM. I said, it's going to, got to wait, wait, because it's going to take us like two to three years to really get to know Eric DaCosta, get to know his strengths, his weaknesses, his good, his bad, all that stuff. It's going to take some time. Um, so now we're seeing it. We're seeing the way that he constructs the roster. We're seeing. Uh, the, the, the trades and signings and cuts that he makes. We're seeing the draft and we're seeing how impactful his drafts have been. So we're seeing all that stuff. We're seeing the hires, the fires, all that good stuff. Um, so now we're really starting to get, we're at the point where we can really, really start to know uh, Eric DaCosta like that. Um, so I would say, I, I wouldn't say he's been a great GM. I, I wouldn't say that. Um, because, again, the, the, the thing that stuck out to me the most uh, as far as him, the thing that he has absolute control over. Because as far as the trades, the trade attempts, he doesn't have full control over that. I mean, he could be a little more aggressive, be willing to give up some more, be give us a little bit more money, give up a little more uh, draft capital. That probably being the biggest thing. But he doesn't have full control over that um, because he could, he could be willing to give up whatever and the other team could be like, no. So he doesn't have full control over that, but what he does have full control over is a draft. Like you got 100% control over the draft, and the draft, there's been a lack uh, at, as far as the draft. Um, so that has got to improve by far. It's been getting better over the years. Certainly has been getting better over the years. Um, and the 2020 guys, they really starting to, some of them, they really starting to, uh, to, to come out more this year. Um, but the draft, that has been a big struggle uh, for EDC. 
Um, so that's it's, it's got to get better, and I'm sure he knows that. He knows. I'm sure he look back at 2019, and it's like, man, who who's left from that class? Even from 2018, there's a lot of guys gone from that. And not that you're gonna keep every single player from every single draft class. No, you're not. But you definitely want to retain some guys. Man. <laughs> like, that's how you build your team, right? And Ravens, like, they're a team that always talks about draft this, draft that. We build through the draft. But a lot of them dudes don't even end up staying around. A lot of them don't even, they be going. So that has to definitely improve a lot. Um, so, again, ADC, he's been good. I, but I wouldn't say great yet. Next question came from my boy Devin. Shout out to him, man. He said, what's good? I hope all is well. I was thinking, um, and this was before the Bills game, he's thinking with the nasty rain coming in, uh, would you mind the Ravens investing in a dome? Or do you think the weather is a Baltimore thing? I mean, that's just a thing with, yeah, everybody that's in the stadium. And it's part of the game, man. It's, it's, it's football weather. It can be ugly. It can be nasty. Sometimes it could be snow. It could be rain, sleet, all that good stuff. Um, and it does impact the games. But I, could the Ravens ever get a dome? That would be something. Uh, oof, I would feel bad for people in Baltimore because them, them taxes, boy, they, because they would have to pay for that. They would have had to pay for that. Um, mm. So, I mean, if if they were to get a dome, if if Ravens end up getting a dome, then that would mean uh, they would end up being in the Super Bowl like the year before. And you know what? Next questions came from my guy, Dominic. He said, what's up, Engraven? I just got finished watching the game, and I can say moral of the story this year is we can't hold a lead. Boom. You could have ended it right, right after that. Ravens cannot hold a lead. But he said in 2020, it was that we can't come back from being down big. Now it's that we can't hold a lead once we go up big. The offense did start moving the ball in the fourth quarter, but we killed ourselves in that first uh, Poyer pick. It killed us as well. With that being said, what did you think contributed to us not scoring at all in the second half and the defense collapsing? I think, the, yeah, the offense not scoring at all in the second half contributed to the defense collapsing. Just like that. Um, but as far as what it was... Again, the the Lamar turnovers, um, the Bateman drops, um, uh, uh, not another receiver stepping up, um, and and Bateman went out. So when Bateman went out, it's like, oof, uh, okay, now what? But they they were like, all right, it, Mark Andrews ain't gonna be that guy for y'all today. So they they took him out after that. Well, throughout the game, really. Um, but yeah, and just. Uh, so, yeah, it is a little, little bit of everything. Um, but, again, like I said, the, the Lamar turnovers, those are big, um, obviously. And just and, then, and also just, just not taking the points once they did get all the way down there. And I understand, hey, you want, you, want, you made it all this way. You want a touchdown. You want seven. You don't want a little three. But you got to realize that that three points, especially if you ain't scored no points the whole second half, that three points goes a long way. Uh, and he also said um, – Sorry, this may be long, but I just needed to let it out. Looking back at that four and fourth and goal, uh, I would have still went for it. Play call was good, and dude was open. We just couldn't get it to him. Uh, I think Hobbs was thinking, like, even if we don't score, we have them at the two in their own territory. Well, that is what he said after the game. He said that that was his thinking. Like, okay, if, if say, for instance, we miss it, he said he said that he wasn't obviously wouldn't think that uh, Lamar would throw the pick in that situation. But, um... Oh, yeah, that's another interception for Lamar in the red zone. He don't got many of those. He got uh, in the regular season. In the playoff, he got that one in the Bills game at pick six. But in the regular season, he got this one. I think he might have another one or two at the most to be to be a total of three. But he ain't got that many. Anyway, um, but, yeah, Harbaugh did say that was his thinking process, his thought process, excuse me. Uh, but what he didn't take into account is that Lamar could throw a pick and the ball be at the 25. Well, I thought it would be at the 20. Anyway, he said, and to say take the points, uh, and to say take the points, then let's say if we did, they still drive down on us and could have scored a touchdown if they wanted to. Defense was breaking down and we couldn't get a stop. That's why I still would have went for it. See, with that, um, if, if you take the points, though, the offense, they have to get a touchdown to beat you. If they kick a field goal, it's just tied. But if it, but and then at the same time with that, if they're trying to get a touchdown, they're not milking the clock. So they're trying to move like as fast as possible. So you got the clock that's in your favor. You got a lead, uh, and you got the offense really pressing, 
trying to get that ball downfield because they have no choice. So that makes it easier. So they're not calling no run plays. They only call in passing plays down the field because they're trying to move. So it, it's just like, man, really thinking back at that, it's like, ugh. But you, you, you put your defense in a, favorable, in a favorable position if you do it like that. But anyway, he said, but knowing the other bad calls Hobbs has made, what do you think will cause Hobbs to change the way he coaches and just play it conservatively? Do you think if the team was to tell him it's either make it or break it this year, uh, would that do it? Um, you know what? One thing about Hobbs, when that pressure's on, that's what Hobbs. He that, that's when he turned to a different animal. <laughs> when that pressure's on, like the pressure's on him, and it's looking like, uh oh, what? Hey, oh, Hobbs might be up on out of here, boy. That's when Hobbs he turns it up, man. Remember back when the last time that it, it was looking like Hobbs was gonna get fired? When was that? Twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. Um, it was looking like, oh boy, yeah, it's it's a wrap. Oh, this this thing is done, y'all. All right, Hobbs. And I remember tweeting. I tweeted. I said, goodbye, John Harbaugh. I said, goodbye, Joe Flacco. All in the same tweet. Um, but then, that was after the Steelers game. That was after that Steelers game. Uh, but then, um, they inserted Lamar. And, boy, these Ravens, they, they changed up everything quick. Boy, they started really doing their thing, man. It was like, whoa, what, what team is this? This ain't the team we've been watching. So, hey, if that pressure got put on Harbaugh, then, hey, Harbaugh would show out. Next question came from my guy, George. He said, good morning, Raven. Hope all is well with you and the fam. So, I've been thinking about some past videos and thoughts on what the Ravens need to do. Early in the season, a lot of fans were complaining and frustrated over the Ravens signing defensive players instead of getting them all more weapons on offense. But four games in now, I'm hearing a lot of fans clamoring for an outside linebacker, inside linebacker, and even cornerback. Some fans are still wanting the receiver to add that extra weapon, but through the first four uh, it looks like the defense is still what needs help, and the offense seems to be humming along well in the first half of games anyway. All right, I'm glad you put that part. We still have reinforcements on the way coming off of IR. Stanley and Edwards on offense, and Bowser and soon, hopefully soon, Houston and Ajabo. Uh, so it seems Ravens brass knew we had to address the defense with the signings of Williams, uh, Fuller, and Pierce to show off this team. Uh, it's amazing how a month ago we as fans thought we could have a top three secondary, maybe the best, and yet we are buried at the bottom as the worst. Yes. I said it plenty of times on here. I, I said for the Ravens to be top five defense, all they got to do is stay healthy. That's it. All they got to do is stay healthy. <laughs> yeah, you know the rest. Um, and he said, I, I feel like the leads we have blown uh, versus Miami and Buffalo adjustments need to be made, but more importantly, we need a veteran playmaker on the defense to step up and take control and right the ship. That's Marcus Williams. Well, he could, we could always, you can never have enough playmakers, though. Uh, and Mar Marlon Humphrey, too. Marcus Williams and Marlon Humphrey. And Marcus Peters, too. But anyway, uh, he said Campbell, Peters, Hump. Uh, he said, heck, even Bynes. But someone needs to take the role of leader to keep these guys from coming unglued. Okay, I see what you're saying. Somebody really step up and even maybe vocally, too. Not just with their play, but vocally, too. Um, and but, and when, when, when you have, when you are a vocal leader, and you a playmaker, then that helps people hear you a lot better. Um, and he said, we are a lot better than we have showed. And this week, we can take control of our division with the win over Cincy. So my question, with being so tight in cap space and we can only make one move to help this team, what player, what position on what side of the ball do you go after before the trade deadline to try and make an impact like Peters did a few seasons ago? Thanks for the positivity and content. Um... I'll say maybe DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, he, um, because with DeAndre Hopkins, short-handed wide receiver, um, a, a threat that's like that, uh, well-respected, um, helps take pressure off of Mark Andrews, helps take pressure off of Rashad Bateman, helps take pressure off of Devin DuVernay. Um, and he also, again, he's like that. Uh, now, he is getting paid, but... You look at the other contracts that the new receivers are getting. He ain't getting paid like that. Like that. He getting paid some money now, but he ain't getting paid like those guys. Um, but he uh, he's a veteran that's like he's played with a lot of different quarterbacks and some bad quarterbacks, but he still made it happen. He can come in and be like, Lamar, no, 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 look, no, chill, relax. No, don't do that or do this. Hey. We got you. This is how this is going to go down. This is how I've seen this before. I know what this cornerback's doing. 
I yeah yeah he been trying this all game, but watch this. So I will say him. Now, I know you did say tight against the salary cap, but DeAndre Hopkins would be that guy. Next question came from a guy, Antonio. He said, do you agree with this statement? Rushing the pass is more important than covering the pass. Uh, instead of paying $100 million for a safety, you should probably pay $100 million for a pass rusher. Instead of drafting a safety with the 14th pick, maybe draft a starting pass rusher. Ooh, he <laughs> Hey, I, um, I can't fight it. I can't fight it because... The pass rushes, they make every cornerback's job that much easier. That much easier. But anyway, he said, we do not value pass rushes on this team, which is why Matt Judon and Zadarius Smith are not here. We do not value receivers on this team, which is why no receiver has ever gotten a significant second contract from the Baltimore Ravens. True. Running the ball does not win championships. If running the ball wins championships, then the Tennessee Titans should have at least gotten to the Super Bowl by now because they have arguably the best runner. If running the ball wins championships, then Nick Chubb should have a Super Bowl ring. If running the ball wins championships, then why is it Jonathan Taylor didn't win the Super Bowl last year? If the philosophy on this team does not change, we are going to see the same things year after year after year. So, we're running the ball. No, uh, it does not win championships, but it can certainly help you um running the ball uh it, it should not be the uh the focal point of the baltimore ravens in my opinion it should still be passing the ball but uh you do want to be able to run the ball too because running the ball it just opens up your offense that much more uh it helps you control the clock that much more it, it helps drives be longer and helps drives get more diverse uh, it gives you just that many more options um so and ravens just they have not been able to run the ball uh, this year um, and now Justice Hill is out for who knows how long uh, so it's time for other guys to step up um, so but as far back to the, the pass rushing thing that was uh yeah spot on next question came from my guy Greg and be more he said hey Greg I'm glad you and the fam got through Hurricane Ian I uh, hope everything is getting better down there after the storm appreciate that man uh, after two straight home games up by three scores 21 in Miami uh and 17 in Buffalo losing at home stings some uh, I know this isn't the defensive vote, but when the Ravens are up by that much, I expect the offense to put games away, and they haven't. Uh, Dolphins game, they struggled to keep drives alive late in the third and in the fourth, and the D had no answers, and the offense continuing to stall didn't help the defense. And in the Bills game, I put less blame on the defense compared to the Dolphins. I think they did an all right job overall running, but the Ravens up 20-3 to in the second quarter, and Greg Roman, who's supposed to be a run game magician, uh, and we did not we did run the ball nice at times, but the play calling at times when they were running the ball, uh, well, then they start the second half not calling one run in the first drive. And when they got to scoring the position, they when they got in the scoring position late in the game, Harvest doesn't take the lead with the field goal and fails on fourth down. That isn't the Ravens I'm used to. I know not all gamble pays off, but uh, take the lead there. It's not like the Ravens were behind the score at the time. Yeah, that's that's big right there. Um yeah, you take the lead. You get the lead. If you're behind and you you if you're down by five or something like that, you down by six or down by seven. Okay, we we, we get it. But you would have been up. So that that's it like it's like thinking about it, and these are simple things too. It's just it has really been opening my eyes a lot more as far as taking the points. But it, it's all good. Um, he said, biggest issue, in my opinion, isn't even the defense, is even if the offense scores in the 30s, they need to not stall so much in the second half after playing great in the first half of games. Spot on. Offense been falling asleep and that ain't going to cut it. Because um, that's what I keep seeing. Not complete games throughout. Exactly. Offense shows up in the first half, second half. <sighs> it, that ain't going to be good enough. Uh, I know weather played a part in the game, but it's issues I keep noticing. Guess after all that, my question is, what do you think is the biggest issue with the Ravens team? And I love hardball, but is coaching holding this team back? Uh, coaching is a part of it. Um, but, yeah, as far as uh, on the field, um, I think the biggest issue, yeah, the, uh, as far as the offense. I mean, we can go offense, defense, and coaching. But, yeah, offense is the second half scoring or the lack thereof. Uh, with defense, um, defense, it seemed like they're gelling. Uh, the, the Bills game, they were gelling. Uh, and it seemed like they started to gel more in that Patriots game in the second half. And then the Bills game, they start gelling a little bit more, too. Let's let's see what this Bengal game has in store. Because that's going to be another nice little test for that defense. Um, but, yeah, offense, you got you to gotta finish. Got to finish the game. Start, st try to finish the game how you started. Um, and, I, and I guess you, you really can't peak. You can't peak too much in the first half. Because if you peak, then it's only coming down from there. Um, but yeah, with 
and with coaching again, yeah, like you mentioned, take the points so you can go up. That's it. Ooh, this is a long episode of questions from subs. We're gonna get through it. Next question came from my guy Wesley. He said, "Hey, what's going on in Graven? Hope you and yours are well. Hey, we doing good. I appreciate it. I understand as Ravens fans, it has been a frustrating past two seasons or more, depending on who you ask. But people don't understand that before Lamar, the Ravens were stuck in no man's land. The Ravens are two and two, but we really should be four and zero. If you know, you know. My question to you is: Do you think if Lamar resigns with us, uh, we win a Super Bowl with him at QB? And do you agree or disagree with Lamar betting on himself with this contract situation? I think Lamar definitely capable of winning the Super Bowl, for sure. I mean, it would be great if it happened this year. It would be great if it happened this year. Do I think the Ravens have put him in best in the best positions to win the Super Bowl throughout the years? No, I don't. I, I, I don't. Um, I think they could have definitely been providing more uh, talent around him, especially at the receiver position. But that's a whole conversation. But it's a conversation I don't never mind having. Though. Um, but I think he certainly can. I sort of think he certainly can. And do I agree with him? Betting on himself with the contract situation, yeah, for sure, because it's it's working out all in his favor right now. It's all working out in his favor uh, because all these other contracts, they uh, excuse me, all these other QBs, they keep getting paid. So that's only going to help him. Uh, then he said, there has been plenty of times in sports where a player turns down a contract often in hopes of a bigger contract and it backfires. I personally agree that he deserves every penny given that he's been a top five QB in the league for quite some time now and he has been in the MVP conversation this season as well as seasons prior. Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah, you said it. Uh, I'll also be at the game this Sunday night versus the Bengals. Go Ravens. Nelly performing at halftime, LOL. Take care. Yeah, that that Nelly, that was, that was kind of, I, I, I don't know what they trying to do with that. But, I mean, we'll see. So, shout out to Nelly. It's getting hot in here. Oh, I don't know if Ray Lewis going to come out and do the dance or something. Hey, say Ray, do Hey, at least he, they they doing that at halftime. So maybe Ray Lewis come out at halftime and he give them the speech of the world to where they actually show up in the second half. Next question came from my guy uh, Rick. He said defensive strategies and shout out to my guy Rick. But he, let's get into it first. He said yo engraving this Rick, aka the shovel. After my last email, I had to come through again. Appreciate the shout out during the live stream and post game video. Since my magic is done on offense, time to dig something up for the defense now. My idea is to only rush three, and obvious passing downs may be disguised sometimes. And these are the reasons. Our pass rush isn't getting home anyway. <laughs> okay, well. Resting away and other pass rushes to be more effective. Oh, yeah, and, and that's a big part of depth right there, and Ravens just don't have the depth. He said, utilize the personnel we got, bring all the safeties on the field, uh, and play double teams. Okay, so to, to double team some receivers or tight ends and whatnot, try to take them out the game. Uh, he said, this would add to our versatility given the edge guys with a well-needed rest. And hopefully JPP fixes things, but I think we should double team in obvious passing downs as much as we can and have a great day. Oh, yeah, I think so much of that would depend on the quarterback, too. Because if you double team this guy, you double team that guy, you got your safeties drop back, you got nine, no, excuse me, you got eight guys drop back in coverage because you're only rushing three. Uh, what if that quarterback takes off? Uh, and then it's like, ooh, yikes. Harbs has to go. Next question came from a uh, guy, Droid209. Now, are you saying Harbs has to go for it? Or, but anyway, he said, my man, um, look, uh, I don't think it's our defense, and I will say on paper we have the best defense. Uh, I'm not going to say it because we don't have a true receiving core, and that's why we can't win. Coaching, 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 coaching. Uh, and that coach is Harbs. The Harbs era was something special, but lately he hasn't been the best at decision-making. We are losing games that we should have won. We might as well let, let go J Justin Tucker since we don't like using him in crucial moments. Uh, I say let go Harbs. Bring in Sean Payton or anyone. I just think Sean Payton could do something with the Baltimore Ravens. What's your take on Payton coaching for us? Another coach that can get the job done. Thanks again, my guy, and take care and stay healthy. Mm. Um, the Justin Tucker part, uh, that, that that's really big. Because a lot of people say the same thing. They're like, man, we paying this guy all this money, best kick in the game, and a lot of crucial moments we have him sitting there on the sidelines. Just sitting there posted up on the sideline, like, oh, yeah, I'm chilling. Um, and when you could have used him, uh, and you know he – about 9.9999999999.9 times out of 10, Justin Tucker's good for it. Um, so, yeah, and, and again, repeat offender. The decision-making has been stuff that has it's been happening for years. Um, so, I mean, we'll see. As far as Sean Payton, uh, yeah, I feel like on offense, he, he could definitely uh, just – I feel like this team will go crazy with, a Sean, with Lamar Jackson and Sean Payton. Oof, I, I feel like oof, dude, I feel like Ravens' offense will be nasty. Like disgusting in a good way. Oh my goodness! I, mm, I, I feel like they would just go wild. Um, and you know that he would, if he got hired, he would call a bunch of his, uh, his people back, uh, people from New Orleans and stuff with that offense that they, the, the offenses that they done had under him. Mm, man, 
So, but yeah, it's not happening. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, um, Hobbs and them. Hopefully, everybody could turn it around. Because again, it's not just Hobbs. Um, but hopefully, with the stuff that Hobbs does, because the Hobbs is at the top, uh, and everybody looks up to him. Because again, he is the leader. He's 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 a head coach. Um, so everybody follows what you're doing, uh, and everybody sees what you're doing. Um, but if you slip up and you've been slipping up and you keep slipping up, people are gonna see that too. People notice everything. People see everything. Uh, these players are very smart individuals. Uh, so they notice that kind of stuff. They notice patterns. They notice struggles. They notice strengths. They notice the good and the bad. So let's just hope that moving forward, it's a lot more good than bad. And the last question on this long episode of questions from subs, it came from my guy, Gold Morano. The case for 250 mil. Columbus Day. Like Christopher Columbus, Lamar has set sail on a journey. However, instead of going on a quest to discover inhabited land, Lamar is on a quest for Steve Bashotti's checkbook. Do you believe that the contracts and subsequent early performances or lack thereof of Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, and Kyler Murray have helped ease the concerns of Mr. Bashotti? No, I don't. I, I, I don't. Because I, I think with, um, with that, Bashotti can look at it two ways. Like, man, um, with Desh well, Deshaun Watson hasn't played yet. But he can look at Russell Wilson and Kyler Murray and like, man, Lamar. I know he he brings me a lot more than those guys can, um, but then at the same time he could look at those contracts and be like, man, those guys got paid, or more so Russell Wilson, and he been performing like that. Ugh, yuck! I don't, I don't want that to happen to me. He could be looking at it from both ways. Uh, he said, should Steve rest assured that investing in his star wide receiver list quarterback? Uh, to the tune of 250 mil will prove to be a wise decision for his franchise. In addition, has Lamar's own performance helped reassure team ownership and executives that 250 mil uh, would be well allocated with so many teams' needs and only seven rounds of draft? That part right there. Um, especially with what we were talking about earlier with them just needing to be better at drafting. Um, them needing to like... Because if, 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 if you pay Lamar his money... Um, you you could still make plenty of other moves as we know, uh, but as far as dra the draft was, they would have to be better. They would have to be better than what they've been, because um, you would have to get more impact out of your drafts. Because you you're certainly gonna be in the drafts a lot more. Uh, and you can still make some nice moves too. Now again, do not get it twisted. Don't think oh if they gave Lamar two fifty mil, whatever they end up giving him, do not let that make you think that okay, all right, Ravens can't do anything now. Because that would be false. That would be a lie. That would not be the truth. Because again, the the sal even if the salary cap didn't go up, but the salary cap is going to keep going up, and Lamar Jackson's deal is it's still going to be a fat little chunk of the uh, of the salary cap. But if you want to make it happen, you can make it happen. If you really want to, we've seen so many teams do it over the years. Not even just the Rams. We've seen so many teams do it over the years. If you want to make it happen. You can. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, the draft would have to be better. And just really the, the, the construction of the team would have to be better. If you're going to invest, I mean, they, again, they should have been done this. But it's like you're going to invest in the quarterback and really invest in him. Show him like, hey, we got you. We, we're going to pretty this thing up around you as well. Don't just invest in him. If you're going to invest in him, like really invest in him and invest around him as well. Tight end, or oh, hey, set, set. Bateman, I think he's gonna be good. Devin Duvin, they've been doing this thing too, but I'll say still get get another guy, get a, get another dog like that, man. Um, the team they they showing you how they feel about Proche and Tylen Wallace. Them them dudes ain't been getting no burn, man. Like none. That's all right. The Ravens showing you. Not fans talking about it. Not a fan comment. No, no. That's the Ravens showing you. They're showing you. They ain't been giving Proche no chance. Tyler Wallace, no chance. Nothing. Nothing. So, fans can say everything that they want, but the team is showing you how they feel. So, hey, I mean, they got a long season to, 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 to see still, but through these first four games, Ravens have shown you. So, maybe things will change now that Bateman is, well, things have to change now that Bateman is out um, since he's hurt. But will they? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see uh, who gets the opportunity now uh, with Bateman being out. And we'll see what they do with it, too. But, um, yeah, man, For as far as the, the Lamar talk, though, 
I don't know, man. I, I don't know what these dudes going to do. Um, I wonder how they're looking at it. I wish I could talk to them and ask them, like, hey, how, how are y'all really looking at this thing? Because I would love to know exactly uh, what's on their minds. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Boy, he like gotta made it.